Okay, six in the slow motion one go to 81 black. Three, two, one, let go. That's right, baby. It's the big show. Welcome to Super Beard Bowl, the show where you vote and then the patrons vote. And at the end, we make eight episodes of Monthly Mayhem. The next public vote is currently on your screen at home. But this month, it's Gerard Khalil in How Famous is Gerard? And it all starts right now. This month on Super Beard Bowl 5. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode eight of How Famous is Gerard. I still hate the title, but here we are. Uh, once again, speedrunning a Mega Man X for you. But this time, ladies and gents, I'm so excited about this guest. Uh, he may be one of the coolest guys I've gotten the pleasure of knowing immediately in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I I want to say we're friends. We're, we're becoming friends, uh, hopefully through this interview today. Um, you may probably all know him right now because a lot of you are playing a little game called Final Fantasy 16. Everyone, uh, it's Clive, Ben Starr. Ben, thank you for joining me today, dude. Thank you, my greatest friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like to think of you as the greatest friend I've ever made. So oh let's wow! Yeah, I, wow. I, I'll take it. Put it on. Yeah, put it on my resume. Greatest yeah. friend of Ben Star. Yeah, there you go. I'll put. I'll put you on my resume too. Great. Um, yeah, you can. You can call me for whatever you need. I got you. In fact, I'll just change my headshot to your headshot, and then we'll just kind of go <laughs> make it really confusing for everyone. Ben, I'm going to show you my headshot from when I was 18, and it's, you're going to laugh at how how funny it looks uh okay. because i look like an action hero uh but i look nothing like it anymore <laughs> i think you still look like an action hero oh thank you uh so ben i'm gonna speed run Mega Man x for you for the next hour yeah. and 15 minutes so mm -hmm. you're just gonna watch me play this game you can ask yeah. questions um and i'm gonna ask you questions we're just we're just kind of shooting the shit pretty pretty standard stuff so ready let's to go yeah i'm cool. ready to go let's go let's do it uh, so Ben, I was doing some research on you, some basic yep. Googling, because I'm very, okay. very bad at Google. Um, yeah. and I found out that you are the same age as me. And yeah. that, that blew my mind because when I met you, uh, to record Friends Per Second, uh, the other podcast that I have, you, you just seemed so much more mature than any of us in the room. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I was so I was so starstruck meeting you guys for that podcast. I was so nervous. I like put on my best clothes, <laughs> and I was, I was so, yeah. Um, I I don't know. Maybe I was just pretending to be really mature around you because I really wanted to impress you all. Because I like every single one of you in that room. I have so much. I have a huge amount of respect for the work that you do. I've been watching. God, I've been watching your videos for years, and um, it was just a real honor to get to chat. And I had such a lovely time. I think maybe some of the alcohol helped. Um, <laughs> we did have a couple of drinks before to, to to ease into it for sure yeah yeah i'm not i'm honestly gerard i'm not i am not mature please don't ever think that i'm mature <laughs> you got it well i mean but see here's the thing though you and i are kind of cut from the same cloth of acting so i yeah. i feel like uh maturity and and like gravitas is kind of attached to our, to the field but also like the brevity of it is what's important too um yeah I like pretending. I'm very good at pretending to be. I so I used to work um, before I started like actually being able to make a living as an actor. When I first left drama school, I would work at this place called Barry's Boot Camp, which was like an exercise place. I think there's one in LA, or there's quite a few in LA. But I worked at the first one in London, and I would just like work on the desk or on the fuel bar making protein shakes for people. And whenever the boss, whenever like the manager was out, I would just pretend to be the manager. So people would come in, people would just come in and be like, is James in? I go, yes, he is, I'm James. And then I would just just take meetings with people um, because James just wasn't available. So I would just pretend to be James. And I really enjoy that because I kind of have this mentality in life that is if you walk into a room confident enough, people will just kind of take you seriously. It's like the social equivalent of putting on a white coat and pretending to be a doctor. You're like, yeah, it's fine. 
people don't take you seriously. That is that that is the most actory thing you could have said. That is so true. I've I found that anytime I audition for a role, whether it be for for TV or film or or for um, any kind of extra work or uh, acting, just for, like for the theater, I always got cast when I just threw caution in the wind and said, you know what, I know what I'm doing. And taking that risk is such a big leap that a lot of actors don't quite figure out right making a choice and committing to it is so key and that confidence resonates so much um it's, you're so you're so right i mean here we're straight off the bat it's it's about being willing to take risks but you have to do it in a controlled way there's taking risks and there's taking risks and I yeah think it's, you know it's that that wonderful um i don't know um coalescence of 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 risk and preparation of going you do put all the work in you do you do the, the hundreds of hours that it takes to prep and you know you learn your craft and then you just kind of go throw it all out the window and yeah. just see what happens um and those are often the best things is where you do them you do the unexpected but it all comes from a place of preparation and, and, and training which I absolutely like. so speaking of training yeah. uh per have you ever read your wikipedia page uh, I, ha I have read my Wikipedia. It's so old. No one's it's actually... It's so old. Like, <laughs> I haven't updated it in ages. And there's some there's some really silly stuff on there. But yeah, I, I did recently. I think it kind of goes up to maybe like the age of like 28. And it just doesn't have anything else after that point as if I haven't worked in like six years. Yeah, I, I was about to say because looking, it's I'm looking at it. Obviously, it has all all. It it looks like you stopped acting in 2017. Yeah, I did. And I then did suddenly, acting, yeah. and then suddenly, you're back in 21, 22, and 23. Yeah. Um, with things like you, London Kills, and Death in Paradise. Yeah. Um, but if someone I wanted to, wants to uh, if someone wants to just kind of who watches this update my Wikipedia page for me, that would be fantastic <laughs> if you could do that. What so do you what do you what do you needed to say specifically? I just need you to just really big me up. Like, just tell people how great I am. Like, I'm a really <laughs> nice guy. No no details about my career. Just be like, Ben's really nice. He's just a really good guy. He opens doors for for people. Um, he helps people cross the road, that sort of stuff. It's yes, like more of a character profile. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I feel like Wikipedia would be in a much better spot if they allowed character profile alterations, for sure. Yeah, that's what um, we should <laughs> Okay, hold on. I have to fix this. I want that pixel, that lovely pixel, so it looks like a, a okay. Super Nintendo CRT and not a weird uh, Flash uh, game. Um, so you went to school. You studied history at the uh, University of Durham. Yes, I did. I did. What, what, what was what was what was in your mind to go? History is where is where you wanted to start because history and acting not, don't necessarily go hand in hand in the states, but I imagine that there's a lot more. Um, you know, um, historical pieces in London and in and, and the UK that you're that get shot quite often. Yeah. Do you know what's in interesting? So, I mean, it may not be interesting. So judge me after I've said it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> prefacing it with, here's a really interesting story and then proceeds to tell a very boring story. No, about no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I always wanted to be an actor since I was probably a really young kid from probably about six or seven my mum would do amateur dramatics and i'd watch her do local pantomime and i always wanted to be an actor and um when i was 11 i was in the national touring company of les miserables so i played a little no gavroche. way you were you were in les mis national tour yeah. that's awesome yeah, yeah 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 so i i was i was gavroche so i um little urchin boy get shot yeah. spoilers um you should have watched it by now. Millions of people have seen that. Um, Look, er, er, as far as anyone's concerned, everyone just remembers that really weird, uh, the movie with Hugh Jackman and uh, Russell Crowe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Russell Crow I am Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, here's a, here's a nice little fact. Uh, Stuart Clark, who plays Dion in Final Fantasy 16, which we will talk yeah. about later, he plays Javert in the current West End production of uh, Les Mis. So, Whoa. Yeah. He's, That's um, so he's, cool. Yeah, he's a wonderful human, insanely talented. I want to be sick. Um, <laughs> but, but as a kid, more, enough about Stuart, more about me. Yes, um, yes, please. We have to build you up for the Wikipedia. Yeah, God, yeah, sorry. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, uh, so he's really charming. Um, he just he likes all different types of foods, very adventurous, very spontaneous. <laughs> uh, as a kid, I always knew that I wanted to be an actor. And um, I did loads of youth theatre, like I did... 
probably three different three different youth theatres, after school youth theatres at the same time. I'd also do sports at school, but I was very academic at school. Like I was like head boy of my school and did all the sports and did all this. I was that annoying guy. Um, and I was always told by my school that you should do, you should have something to fall back on, you know? It was never, you should be an actor. It's uh, It was always kind of instilled in me, you're probably gonna fail. Um, you should always have a, a proper degree to fall back on. And so I was always kind of told, you should go and do a proper degree, whatever that means, you know, like a history or an English or whatever. Um, unfortunately, I was good at history and also my dad, studied history and was so good at kind of allowing me to foster that love of history and i and i and i thought he was you know that that man just meant the world to me and so i really wanted to follow in his footsteps so i went to durham university which is a beautiful historical university i got to live in a castle and whoa yeah yeah i did i'm sorry i did get to live in a castle and um <laughs> i apologize um it was it's a beautiful beautiful city um you should uh, you should get Lucy to take you. Like it's it's a really really amazing place, um, northeast of England. I lived there for three years, studied history, but really all I ever did was um, uh, theatre. I we had an extracurricular. Yes, nice achievement. Thank you. Um, <laughs> back to Mega Man. Um, <laughs> but I would do plays all the time, so I would just do. I was doing. Usually, I'd have like three or four plays on the go at the same time. All of us would just kind of like create our own plays, write our own plays, perform very bad productions of Shakespeare or whatever. Like really I, think, bad. I, I think all of us performed like it feels like we, I mean, this is just me speaking at a turn. When you're in when you're a starting actor, uh, if you have not attempted to try to lie to everyone that you understand Shakespeare and know how to perform it, you're not truly acting like you have yeah. to stumble through and mm -hmm. it's it's like those it's like the equivalent of like posting on facebook when you were like young and reading those cringy posts you have to just yeah. get used to performing shakespeare whether you're good at it or not <laughs> yeah my um my handle my um playstation handle i mean i i, sh I shouldn't say it out loud actually that's a bad thing well, um, well, well I'll, bl I'll bleep it okay well no because it's kind of related to it but anyway okay. i would Okay, so it's fine. I'll just I'll I'll hide myself. Um, <laughs> I I at university created. Uh, I was doing some awful awful Shakespeare thing. I think it was called like collected works or something, and it was like different excerpts from um, different Shakespeare plays. Yeah. Together, and um, on they were asking for quotes to put on the front of the poster, and I was just a little bit of a shit. And I, um, so I said, oh, you should use the really famous quote from Cymbeline, um, which is, uh, the sharpest claw is oft the bluntest tool. Now, that is not a quote from Cymbeline. That is just something I made up on the spot and got them to put on the front of the poster. But it is an iambic pentameter. And they were like, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that quote. That's such a good quote. Um, and so, yeah, it's on the front of this poster is the sharpest claw is off to the bluntest tool. And so now part of that quote is actually now my PlayStation handle because I think it's just the most pretentious thing I've ever done in my life. That is so funny, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. So now I quote it. I feel like any, any time I think there's kind of a bullshitter who thinks they know Shakespeare, I'm like, oh yeah, my favorite quote's uh, the sharpest tool is off the bluntest tool. <laughs> That's your litmus test. You're, you're it's like, my litmus test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Scout out the dickheads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how many shows would you average, do you think you've performed in, in your life over the years? Over, I think over a hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely over 100. I think at university I, I did just an ungodly amount of, of really bad plays. Um, but I, um, yeah, hun hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. And I, um, I've i loved it. And interestingly, actually, when you become a professional actor, your relationship with theatre kind of changes because it's, you know, you know this, right? You spend your entire life paying probably like subscriptions or whatever to your local clubs to oh, yeah. do it. And then suddenly it's like, oh, by the way, do what you were doing as a kid but now you get paid for it. That's a really weird, a weird thing that something you do ha has value. And so yeah. your relationship changes with it, which has been super strange. Like I would have done Final Fantasy for free. I even <laughs> joked about it. I kept saying, I'll do it for free guys. If I'm not very good, it's fine. Just let me do it anyway. And I'll just pay you to do it. You know? Don't, let's not tell Yoshi P that. Let's not, let's not let him know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't, I won't tell him. <laughs>
I think I actually have actually told him already to his face. <laughs> <laughs> and we went out for dinner and I just said, um, uh, sir, uh, this is the greatest honour, please. I would have done anything for free. And Cody just was like going, Ben, no, no, don't say it. Don't say stop it. it. Stop it. Don't say it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually, a, that's actually a great starting point. So, um, very common in the games industry, in the games industry, um, because I'm sure you're very plugged in and aware that a lot of a lot of what you know in the early the mid 2000s to to basically now I would say a lot of um, voice acting starting out for for uh, gamers in the space a lot of more Hollywood actors right you know you've got like Jack Black and and um, uh, you know people, all the characters in Mass Effect right these celebrities kind of coming in but now now you're seeing more and more actual celebrities playing games and you in fact are an actual gamer who loves Final Fantasy and I think that's one of the best things about the fact that you playing Clive has been is very evident that you care because yeah. you know I, I think for a long time and, and I think for a long time a lot of folks have just felt that pressure of like oh this actor doesn't really play games they're just getting paid for a paycheck um, yeah. how do you feel like your, your gaming knowledge helped you at all if any um, throughout the process of working on 16? It helps a lot, you know, because I think um, video games, video games are such a difficult medium to act in. And that might sound crazy, but it is just a completely different discipline in many ways, because not only were we doing the style of, you know, with the with the head cam and doing all kind of the very realistic acting, it's also pretending as stuff isn't there. It's kind of the same as like mental green screen, isn't it? Where I'm looking up and being like, oh, well, look at this place. That place isn't there. <laughs> that place isn't there. You've got yeah. to pretend. But to kind of um, get that sense of wonder um, and that sense of awe and that sense of scale, can often be helped with like knowing what came before so i'm not gonna lie like i was inspired by a lot of like what ashley birch did in horizon and um i would say like her it, take it for granted a lot of people take it for granted her performance as aloy and her ability to talk to herself convincingly and thus telling the player what to do is so so skillful and i think ashley birch is just an absolute pro at that um, and I studied her as Aloy. And also, um, who, um, oh God, the name has escaped me. Um, uh, Jedi Fallen Order, who's, um, who played? Oh! Yes, <sighs> annoying me now, annoying me. Dominic Monaghan, Dominic Monaghan? Yes, I, believe, I think Monaghan? that's who it is. Um, or something Monaghan. Um, Cam really. Cameron Monaghan. Cameron Monaghan. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He is, I was playing some, I was playing Jedi Fallen Order when, um, when I was doing some of this recording and his talking to BD1 was really, was really cool. And I think there's such a, an amazing skill that you learn, um, I learned through playing. And also I played all these games. I talk to myself, I pretend I'm the character, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That to you? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, of course you, you do. do. At the very least, you read it out loud as if you're contextualizing it, right? Because sometimes yeah. when you're reading stuff, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense in 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 the text, or there's no voice acting, so you have to interpret it how it goes. Yeah. Um, but I think I think one of the best things about your performance as Clive is that uh, you can you can't really tell when the breaths are in your voice in that way of like you are clearly in the moment when you're reading most of these lines. I think. You know, if you remember Final Fantasy X's voice acting is always criti criticized and panned. There are some great moments in that game, but there's also some moments where it's like, oh, this doesn't feel, this feels a little off. And it's because, you know, of how they chose to to do the mocap and the, and the writing and the performances. But because they chose to go a more Western approach for, first, um, it's almost like they your performance was was infinitely better just because they, they worked around you. And that's a very very rare thing how, how was that yeah. experience like being like awesome. the original clive yeah it was awesome it's also it's just it's it's kind of it's pinched me really but also creatively it was the most rewarding thing to get to do because you know uh, what happens in this game and what clive goes through um to to be able to feel like we are carving our own path for ourselves I don't I don't think I don't think what we did was necessarily the expected choices for Clive. Like a lot of the stuff that we did we found in the moment. I think uh, maybe even some of the team were quite surprised with how uh vulnerable a lot of the actors felt like 
they could be allowed to be in that room. Um, I think there's always a temptation when you're a hero to want to just kind of always be steely. Um, and I really like the fact that lots of people have seen lots of tweets calling Clive a baby girl, you know, like I kind of, <laughs> I love, I love that about, because I'm like, he is. Yeah. He, he is so, he is so vulnerable and he is always moments away from wanting to kind of um, burst into tears because of everything that's happened to him. And I, I love the, the fact that there are, there are heroes or this hero in particular is, is, is is representing that and uh, and i really if one people take one thing away from it i just want people to be like yeah it's okay to cry it's okay to cry it's okay yeah. to 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 love and care and 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 feel things and that was the most freeing thing about this whole experience was us giving the unexpected lines the unexpected performance and being able to be in the room with ralph you know the uh, ralph the the voice of summer 2023 einson <laughs> Um, uh, and to be with Susanna and 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 the rest of the team, it just was it was it was super super awesome. Um, how how much of the game was recorded with you guys in person? Was it was a majority of it? Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't actually. We did. Um, we had the first couple of months together. We were all together because that was 2019. So it was before the pandemic, um, and that was just wicked. So a lot of the Clive and Sid stuff that you you see the really kind of like fun backwards back and forth that was done with ralph and i together um but yeah after that it was we all had to do most stuff remotely but because i'd had this kind of revolving door of actors coming through so i would just stay there and i would have um uh all the all the different actors come in i think it was a day where i had six different people come in and we would just do scenes together and um I got to have a relationship with all of them and it felt like Clive because Clive is the main character he has to be shaped by those around him and so I was yeah. able to find Clive by bouncing off um Edmund like Edmund Dean or, or or Stephen Critchlow who plays Byron or whatever you get to I got to figure out who Clive is going to be over the next couple of years because of of that relationship that we built um yeah that's that so really cool I I I, I can imagine, like, it to a degree. I mean, this is, I've, I've never done video game voice acting to that degree, but I imagine it kind of feels like a play in that, like, you guys are are not really rehearsing in real time, but you're you're con you have to have that the the chemistry building going into it. And if it's like you're talking to someone who only has three or four lines, that's much harder. But you know, when you're spending time with Byron or or uh, Dion or Joshua. Or, or Jill, like you, those scenes, they go on and you guys have real story moments and character arcs that you can't just like phone in. Like there, there you could tell there is a level of, of human connection that was required for these characters to work. And yeah. I think it's very evident in every scene that, that you're a part of. And that's actually the other crazy thing is that we spent almost every scene in the game with Clive. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the, you, your responsibility to do that must must have been uh immense for you <laughs> yeah it really was it really was i think now i'm just feeling relief that it's out and people are going i really enjoy clive and i'm thinking thank thank the heavens <laughs> uh because if you didn't you'd really hate the game um it um it's such a bold choice to say that we're going to go on this individual's journey and that was ne it was never lost on me how huge that responsibility was but yeah. what i think what it did do is uh, give me quite a bit of bandwidth to experiment with different aspects of him i didn't he didn't have to be one thing all of the time he could have different levels and dynamics and i could go in and be like right he's gonna be crime solver clive today or he's gonna yeah. be sulky clive and you know when you first meet him and he spends time with sid right in those opening sections he is the straight man you know, he is the straight man to Sid's cross between Sully and Nathan Drake, you know? That totally. Real... And and so Sid works so brilliantly because he has that, that straight Clive, sulky, wants to get to his destination, wants to um, get vengeance. Um, and that's how that works. And so as much as I found that frustrating, because you kind of go, you go like, oh, I want Clive to, to be more than that you get to spend 60 hours with this guy and he goes on this amazing amazing journey and um 
the story and the writing allowed me the opportunity to to sit in those moments and um, and just kind of let them breathe. I think. So this actually, I, I, I this is making me think of another question. Obviously, this is Square Enix, the Japanese company, writing a Western story. Um, whenever you were recording any dialogue, did you have to kind of ask yourself? what the fuck am I saying in the context of like what the scene is? Cause I imagine that like not ever, I mean, obviously Koji Fox like worked his ass off to, to localize and make it make sense. But did you have any moments of like, what is going on in this scene and what does it require for me to do? Cause I can imagine that at times there may have been a couple of moments where you're like, what is happening? How much do you want me to cry today, guys? What do you want me to do? Um, <laughs> I, uh, no, I, there are always that, but I would say the greatest gift that this game gave me um, was a friendship between me and the um, the team in the room. So my friendship with Koji, my friendship with Morgan Rushton and Ollie Chance, who were part of the localization team, with John Taylor, who also worked with Koji, um, and with Hannah Price, um, kind of the original performance director. We were in the room for so long that I could, we could just have frank conversations. So I'd be like, what are we doing today? And walk in and we would explain it. And because Morgan and Koji, I mean, Koji's the lawsman, right? They are walking encyclopedias for this game. Um, but, you know, two years in, I know everything that's happened to Clive. I'd probably recorded the end of the game by that point. And we would jump back and go, so what's just happened? And it'd be like, oh, right, this thing in Sambrek or like this thing in, in Dalmechia has already happened. And I would know where I am. But these new scenes would come in and I would just have to kind of remember where I was. But um, yeah, I just turn up. What are we doing today, guys? Um, and and just kind of have to get into it. Um, I, they, they were so good. And we had this amazing shorthand by the end of it. And my friendship with them kind of goes beyond a professional relationship now because we just hang out and want to want to spend time with each other because we've been through so much. Yeah. And it allowed me also to just um, often be not very good if that makes sense i think in order to be good you kind of have to be a bit rubbish 50 percent of the time you have to have that fearlessness to go i'm going to try something and i yeah i think i said to morgan the other day i think 80 percent of my offers were the worst possible take we could possibly do but 20 percent of the time it was brilliant and they allowed me to to do that well you you need that moment of figuring it out right like uh, uh, like in a play or even film rather uh, you have to have moments and abilities to learn and, and play in the room and find that voice and character and if there, if it's just like hey that was great let's move on because production says so it's much yeah. harder to feel like you did a, a great job at a piece like that whereas something like this this is a game where you voice every single line Ben there's not one piece of dialogue that you did not voice in this game yeah I know it's a lot isn't it yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. It's, I'm so it's a lot, sorry. It's a it's a lot. More. <laughs> what are you so, so? Luckily, I mean, look, that's the thing is that you know, and and uh, based on all the stuff I've read, I I can attest for you that no one is going there going, man, he talks a lot. Like those, you talk the whole time, and and it's because you are the player character. We are experiencing everything with you in real time. And the questions you're asking and the moments you're having are the moments that we need to understand as well. Otherwise, how the hell are we going to understand? You know, it's not like cloud where he's just like dot, dot, dot every 10 seconds. Like you need to have those moments of asking questions out loud and experiencing those moments. And yeah, it, it the fact that no one's really going, I wish Ben would shut up is a great yeah. thing because there are definitely yeah. characters in games that you go, Man, this the director or the the acting on this is too much, but I never once got that at all with the game. Thank you. I think they I think the team also did a really good job of um because, because of the way that it is is designed, Clive would always have someone to bounce off at that perfect moment in that part of the game. So, you know, he will have Byron there or he will have Jill or Sid or whoever to kind of allow Clive to bounce off and that is very much reflective of where he is at that point in the game. And so You'll often find that those characters will do a lot of the heavy lifting, and I've got to thank them as well for it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And now you've said it. It's why it took four years. I, I um, the place where I recorded it, side. Um, uh, they 
they're amazing it's where they recorded the witcher and assassin's creed and cyberpunk it's like they are the best in the business at what they do and um i think i worked out with a casting director that i i think i spent i'm the one actor they've had for the longest on a single project wow like most, the most amount of hours and they have done they have done those games so that's not necessarily from the amount of that i've said but the amount of time that it took and how meticulous they were you know we were probably going at half speed to what a normal game would be maybe even a, a quarter speed because of how meticulous everyone was in the room um and because they wanted to get it right because i think everyone was was nervous you know they they wanted the voice acting to be a standout aspect of it yeah um, which was it's it was it was never lost on us that this would be forever you know so, you say sorry go ahead no i have nothing of interest to say please carry no on. no you, this has been are you kidding me ben this has been amazing i'm having oh, a great time awesome, um good. uh what i was gonna say is uh so 2019 you start doing the role yeah and then we see our first trailer i believe in 2020 at we the do. reveal of the PS5 uh, mm. console uh, showcase, did yeah. you know they were going to show the trailer at that point? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. And you right. were told not to say anything about who who was Clive or yes. anything at all. Yeah, I got I got a message from Koji the next day, being like, um, "There is still a gun pointed at your head. You're not allowed to say anything." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, it was. It's such a hard secret. It's such a hard secret to keep because. Um, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't until the Game Awards that that I was allowed to say anything, right? It wasn't until the Game Awards they... of twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah. After oh my gosh! Lesson, so it... not even not even less than 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 what? Like seven months ago, you had to you could finally yeah. talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. So I've been keeping this secret, even though my voice has been out there, and I've been watching every. I've been such a little creep watching everyone's reactions <laughs> to the trailers. You know, it's been it's been really 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 fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I wasn't allowed to say anything, even though, you know, it was my voice out there. But also, kind of, no one really knew who I was. You know, I'm not really, I, I, I'm not really, I wasn't a, a kind of a, a personality in the video game space. This is all very new to me. You know, this is kind of my first foray into this at this kind of like scale and level. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I... I, I I, I loved it. I really liked kind of being a little little weirdo watching everyone else. Um, <laughs> just, a little, just a little creep being like, what do you think of this? What do you think of my, my performance? Um, I loved everyone speculating about who it was going to be um, because lots of people, lots of people thinking that, you know, I was I was someone from Final Fantasy 14 or something, you know, yeah. who, um, which was fun to see. But yeah, I know. Um, well, let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about your, 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 your history with Final Fantasy because you are for all intents and purposes you are a completionist like that's how you know sort of talking these yeah. games are important to you final fantasy is important to you what's your favorite one what started the completionist is for you and and just kind of go from there yeah so um my favorite is because it's my first one is final fantasy 8 and yes. I, I say that, that is the first one i that is the first game i ever in inverted commas completed i did everything in that game i think it took me about as an 11 year old it took me about 110 hours um, yeah and i just think as an 11 year old what are you doing ben go outside <laughs> do something with your life achieve something um but my parents were so supportive of me because they knew how much i how cool it was and and how you know they would talk about all the different systems to their friends being like our son isn't a loser he's actually just using this really clever maths in his head i am defeat <laughs> aliens and that was my parents <laughs> trying to describe uh my experience with final fantasy to to their friends so i didn't look like an absolute nerd um <laughs> but yeah i would do i did eight and then seven and seven and i mean all of them seven nine um ten six um and i would do all of it you know i would i wanted to and i got the guides as well like i really loved the guides having the guides opposite it so it didn't take me as long i mean i spent the first like 50 hours of final fantasy 8 just doing it blind so i spent most of the time just spamming guardian forces um <laughs> you know i mean i think i think probably disc one probably took about 30 hours just because i just wasn't playing it right yeah um, but then yeah final fantasy i think i told you final fantasy 13 was the first ever platinum trophy i got um uh, I wasn't really a, a trophy hunter. I actually probably wasn't really a trophy hunter or a completionist until probably like a couple of years ago. But 
I really, really got the bug for it. I used to just kind of like play a story game, get through it, leave it, cast it aside. And then I don't know what it was, but there was just something about popping that platinum trophy that just made me, oh, there was that endorphin rush. Yeah. And since, since I bought a PlayStation 5, I mean, I started, you know, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. But like, since I got a PlayStation 5, I think there isn't a game I have played on PlayStation 5 that I haven't got the platinum trophy on. Wow. I just... I've really just gone, if I'm going to play this, I'm going to play it until it is it is used. <laughs> it is yeah. spent. There is nothing left of this game. Um, <laughs> I think we were talking about um, Crash Team Crash Team Racing, uh, Nitro Fueled. Yes. I was a husk of a man. There was nothing left to run. I had nothing of me left. When I got that <laughs> you, platinum trophy, I felt nothing. <laughs> you are a better man than me. That's a game that... Uh, whenever, so just a little behind the scenes with the completionist. So has as, we we determine how what games I complete based off of a few things. Whether or not the company gets me the game in time, whether there will be lasting interest in the franchise or game title after release, because you know YouTube is such a, a fickle monster. Um, but uh, when it came to you know Crash Four and and, and cr the Crash trilogy like and, and I, I i completely the original crash uh, um team racing like i loved those games through and through and then i saw all the weird like monetization stuff they were doing and like the, mm. the season pass stuff and i was like i don't know if i can do this like i don't yeah. know if i have the passion for it so when when i first met you and you told me you did that i was like oh my god you you are a better man than me. You you understand the plight and you do what I do sometimes, which is you punch that wall until it comes down and no matter what it takes. And that that game is not easy. That is that is a that 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 changes a person. It's it's the kind of the classic game of it's actually quite easy until about 90%. And then yep. it is the hardest thing you've ever played and you <laughs> want to exit your own skin and go and sit in a coffin for the rest of your life. That's, that's what it, and I think that is the difference with trophy hunters is like, I can't sit. If I've got like 70% of the trophies, I'm going a hundred percent. Yeah. That is, that is a huge mistake. That's how they get you. That is how they get you. Um, I, 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 like that. I decided um, that I was going to do it. And I, I remember I had on my my phone the Oxide times. It was 36. I don't, they, to get the Platinum Trophy, you have to beat Oxide in these time trials. And that is, it's actually insurmountable when you first think about it. It's actually impossible because they're not just doing the tracks. They're doing the tracks the way that the tracks should not be done. And you have to learn an entirely new skill set on how to play that game. You have to learn to be the best of the best and then better than the best in order to get those oxide times and then you have to have some luck and fortunately it was the pandemic and i um i just went well i have no life i have i have no <laughs> friends anymore and there's this this will be my friend yes. this will be my one and only friend and i will do this <laughs> and you know i think you know i don't need to shower i don't need to eat no one will judge me i'll just i'll just do crash team racing <laughs> And it was, it was honestly, it's probably the worst and the best thing I've ever done. Because yeah. also, if I don't complete it, then what's the point? Yeah. What's the point, Gerard? I've, I've come, I've come this far, you know. Um. So that was, that was my crash team. <laughs> How? So luckily, the platinum in, in sixteen is so, such, so breezy compared yeah. to most games. How far are you along in your, in your quest to get the platinum? I'm about 68%, um, and I am actually going to take a break. Normally, I would just breeze all the way through, but I think because my life has been 16 yeah. for, the past, for the past four years, but really intensely for the past, like, three months, I've played it, i finished it. I'm now going to maybe put it aside for a couple of months, and I'm going to move on to something else, and then I'm going to come back and do Final Fantasy mode. You know, that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to... Yeah. Um, that's that's going to be my experience, because I think that how much is too much and i'm thinking maybe this is too much maybe yeah. this, um <laughs> because i've said this to you before like i'm not just i haven't just played it i'm I, i'm a weirdo I'm, i apologize to everyone i've probably watched you play final fantasy 16 <laughs> i am that little creep who's gone in to like people's streams have been like hi i play clive and just like freak people out like i have no chill i have no chill with this game 
I'm living my dream, Gerard. I'm living my dream. But um, you know what? That that to me is amazing because it's it's like you get to go to Disneyland as Mickey Mouse and watch everyone freak out over you, not really knowing, right? You get to. Yeah. It's that bliss of my hard work is here and it's paying off and. Especially because Final Fantasy fans are the best fans. They have this connection and this this special respect for the game, mm -hmm. and and you must be over the moon to see so many streamers and and creators out there just sit back and be infatuated with what this journey's been. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And I think that one thing that Sixteen does brilliantly is um, incredible moments. Like it has, I think it has some of the most amazing moments in, in Final Fantasy. I think it has some amazing standout icon fights. I think it really has some incredibly emotional beats. And so I love watching streamers get to those moments and see how it, how it hits them. Um, so I will often kind of like go on YouTube and watch a, a replay of someone hit those moments. And I, and I, I'm like, no chill. I'm super proud of some of those moments and how they turned out. And I love watching people's reactions to them. So, yeah, it's it's really, really awesome. And also, it's awesome watching people who don't play Final Fantasy games play this for the first time and experiencing maybe what this series can do for them. And I really hope that, yep, you've, you've, you've played a, a character action game that's been really, really lovely and fun, but go back and play the greats. Go go back and play, you know, the PS1 games. Go go and play 10, go and play 12, 15, all of them. They're awesome. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, like, yes, I work for Square Enix technically, but I, I would tell you why any of these games are great. I got Final Fantasy 15 on the day that it came out. I, I watched King's Glaive. I watched Brotherhood. I called off from work. I think I got the Platinum in like 10 days. My housemate yeah. was like, Ben, you're unwell. And I said, <laughs> yes, I am. I am. Doctor, doctor, don't heal me. I don't want to be healed. I, I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. so, as, as, what, what's, so we've talked a lot about Final Fantasy, but I, I want to keep that train going. What's, what's like your favorite franchise and/or game set outside of, of uh, Final Fantasy? Right now, right now, and it's just kind of a really kind of a, a relatively recent thing. Is Resident Evil? Yeah, you play, been playing four. Oh my god, have I? I just got the I, I just got I got the platinum trophy on on four. I was that was the last one I got actually before sixteen. And yeah. um, I loved, I loved it. I love what they've done with the remakes of it because there's the sacred playthrough. There's the playthrough of four that took me 30 hours. I did everything that I possibly could. I was like yep. stopping every boulder, trying to pick up anything or just, I spent probably about 10 hours just in the shooting range alone, trying to get yeah. those S SS ranks or whatever. Um, and then, and then it says, oh, you found that difficult. That's fine. How about you play it again, except we give you infinite ammo. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and it's so fun. And I, I never thought I'd be this guy, but go back and, you know, I'll do, yeah, sure. I'll do a knife only run. Why not? Yeah. Why um, not? And it's amazing how that 30 hours, I think the last time I played it in order to get the platinum trophy, I did it with the infinite rocket launcher in under two hours. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's just awesome. They're great games. It's that perfect like camp but um but it's terrifying at the same time um and you know they've 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 nailed it like seven and eight first person i absolutely adore um and then we've got the remakes at the same time i i, I really really adore them i had the the absolute honor of me meeting nick apostolides um uh who plays leon in two and four um, and he's just the nicest guy. And I was just fanboying over him the entire time at, at the JW Marriott. <laughs> I just was going, you're my hero. You're my hero. I love you. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I love I love um, that franchise. That's my recent one, but also Metal Gear Solid. Um, um, you're, I'm sure you're like, hey, how do I... How do I get in on, on Metal Gear Solid 3? Or I guess they're using the same actors, but are, yeah. that's a franchise you're like, yo, how do, how do I get in on that? Yeah, I, 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 I think that... I, let's just think about this. Metal Gear Solid 1. Metal Gear Solid. It wasn't called 1. It was just called Metal yeah. Gear Solid. Um, I don't know if you know this, but it was just called Metal Gear Solid. Um, <laughs> That's, that's did you, fact, did right you know? Yeah, no, I'm really... I know a lot about video games, don't worry. Um... <laughs> Uh, that the 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 level of voice acting in that game for a PlayStation One game is is actually scary as to how good that was back in yeah. the day. What what David Hater and everyone managed to do, Jennifer Hale managed to do in that game is is astonishing. 
just it felt like a movie and we were playing that on our playstation one this is before you know things were being voiced on ps2 and ps3 and we were having kind of the cinematic uncharted of this world yeah yeah just it, it still it still blows my mind what metal gear solid was doing even with two as well like um i i, I love it dearly because of 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 how how daring the storytelling was um back in the day um and what it was really trying to do and yes it was completely batshit crazy like it did not make, <laughs> do you know what? it did not make sense it did not make sense <laughs> but we we pretended like it did didn't we think that it made sense we were all kind of going this is this is art this is art this is cinema guys no yeah. it wasn't um but it's i i really really adore them and i think obviously hideo kojima what a what a what a mad mad genius i bought death stranding day it came out built a motorway for 45 hours <laughs> um yeah i really i think i think he has a, a very unique perspective on things and i will play anything he ever makes ben i careful what you wish for man because i have a feeling that hideo hideo seems the kind of guy that he'll he'll find final fantasy 16 and then he'll go back and he'll watch jamestown and he'll go back and he'll watch your stuff mm. and the next thing you know you're going to be in this trans game what a nightmare what a nightmare <laughs> Oh my god, just realizing my dream again. Oh, awful. <laughs> I'm calling it now. I'm yeah. calling it now for you, Ben. I'll, I'll yeah. see you in Death Stranding 2 or 3. I'm, I'm ready to see your performance there. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd love that. Um, I, I have said this before, and I will say it again. I, If I was to never be in another video game in my life, I could die happy because... I I can't imagine a scenario... Like, this, this, this opportunity that I've been given is is kind of crazy um yeah and everything else will just be like icing on the cake um the opportunities that it has allowed me to talk to to be honest the, you know yes being in final fantasy is fine it's getting to talk to really cool people who i really like i get yeah. to talk to you i get to talk to you i get to hang out with like brutally honestly i get to make new friends is that a weird thing to say like i get not to at make all new especially after a pandemic Man, like it, it, it felt like our world was ending, and that there, the human connection and the ability to connect with people was dwindling. And so the fact that this game not only, uh, you know, gave this opportunity, it's allowing you to reconnect with people too. Yeah, I, I, I had this kind of pinch me moment when I was sitting there with you and Lucy and Ralph and Jake and 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 Tam in the room, and I just thought, wow, I get to, I get to hang out with people who I think are just really, really wonderful, or talented, or insightful, and. And it's very rare in in late in life, late in life, later in life as you get older, to, to kind of make those connections that you feel are kind of meaningful and get to hang out with people that really inspire you, but also are really down to earth. And that's one of the great gifts that this game has given me. And the fact that I'm here watching you absolutely nail Mega Man X um, <laughs> whilst drinking a glass of wine um, <laughs> is a, is a real kind of pinchy moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey man, I, I you know. Uh... I think it's I think you deserve it you know like I think anyone could tell immediately just from the interviews you've done in the past and and just how you you've portrayed Clive like I'm I'm I'll see you at the game awards you know what I mean like this is what you've done is you've done such great work and it's not because of your pedigree from from your past work on on you know television and film or theater like this is this is your heart and soul is in this game and that's kind of the way i've always seen acting is that when you take on a role your ability to convince the room of what's going on is you're putting yourself so front and center of what's going on and you've done that so much with clive i and like you know i know you're playing a character but like i i feel like i've gotten to know you so much because of your performance with clive and i yes. think that's gonna go on for for years and years and years when people look back at this and that's so exciting as an actor it's so exciting uh as a game enthusiast like i i think you know you you deserve it and i'm so excited for you oh mate thank you i genuinely thank you i um yeah yeah that's it's lovely of you to say um and i'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm not kind of you know I'm not taking a piss. It really, it's, it's a, that is a, a hugely lovely thing to hear because I, as a person, you never kind of want to believe it. Um, and I think because I've always been kind of like an outsider looking in to this world, always kind of trying to 
I don't know how to say this. Like I've I've always felt like a voyeur, or, or or I've always enjoyed like listening to podcasts and being a part of this community as a fan. The fact that I've been a part of it, and that that maybe that Clive will have all the work that I've done will have some sort of impact on the thing that I I value so highly is 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 really exciting and when people say stuff like you've said i i kind of go no that won't no don't worry something will go wrong i'll catastrophize something <laughs> like, like it's like no I'll, I'll 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 die in some sort of tragic car accident and it can't, it can't go well um it's <laughs> really really stupid but yeah i i'm i'm so i'm so proud of what we've done and i really hope that clive Clive is a is a character who who people really take into their hearts and they really appreciate and it's a tough it's a tall order coming into this Final Fantasy pantheon I tell you that um, there's some there's some pretty pretty iconic people um, in that in this series so to to enter in is is, is pretty scary um, but yeah I'd love to I'd love to keep working as a as a in in video games in in, in some way anything you know I. I I value not just the games themselves, but the people who make them and the people who talk about them and analyze them and the people who love them. They are so much a part of who I am. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, well, not, not to date this video, but my, my piece on Final Fantasy 16 at this point will be out in the public for people to watch. Uh, it's a 46 minute video. Mm -hmm. So, I hope you like Final Fantasy 16, Ben, because uh, I I went in depth on it. So, <laughs> oh god, 46 minutes—that's a lot, Gerard. It doesn't need to be that long. God, that's yeah, man. Um, I will watch it all probably multiple <laughs> times because um, <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Um, yeah, I, I I look forward to it. I I I I've loved the I love people's reactions to it, um, and um, yeah, I'm I'm fortunate that discourse is being had about it that people are having conversations about this game and um yeah we will we will see what the future holds <laughs> so you, just to get back to mega man because i feel like i haven't explained anything to you so yeah, i, I will try going on what the <laughs> hell is going on i will explain everything in a very easy bite-sized summary so mega man x takes place uh a, a literal uh 100 years after mega man original in this world, uh, essentially, Mega Man X is the first robot that can think and feel like a normal person. And so he's special in that way. And um, uh, in this game, there's eight robot masters that have been corrupted. And uh, they are terrorizing all the different atmospheres and environments. And they work for this big bad named Sigma. And so we have to go to eight stages, defeat his robot masters, gain their powers. And then we barrel down to fight Sigma to stop him and his evil plans. Uh, that's like the basic boo-boo. I read the back of the box art description. Um, but what you saw me just do, uh, besides just murdering everyone, is that in this game specifically, because it's a Capcom game, uh, by doing this weird trick where you go to Armored Armadillo stage and you die five times in a row, or rather you visit the stage five times with all of the gear on you, you unlock reuse Hadouken from Street Fighter, uh, the franchise. And so now I can one hit kill any boss in the game. So we're gonna basically uh -huh. try and murder everyone through the power of Hadoukens. <laughs> I was gonna ask if that's what you were doing, but no, you already explained it, so it's fine. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say, are we getting the, uh, are we getting the Hadouken? Ah, there we go. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, we got it, there it is. That's great. Front and center. <laughs> That's how the completionist you, in me. How did you first hear about this? About the Hadouken? Yeah. Oh, man. So, um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you know, when you grew up, there must have been magazines. But I think for yeah. me, it was Nintendo Power. Great. Um, Nintendo Power, I think, was how I was subscribed to Nintendo Power for a long time. And that's how I always found out about everything. And I felt like the, the cool kid in school because, like, yeah. no one in my grade had nintendo power except for me so you you, you I would... me as a very arrogant man yeah just like yeah. an arrogant kid strutting around the classroom yeah like look at me i know how to get the hadouken and yeah, i know give me how your to... lunch money weirdo <laughs> yeah i gotta go Great. exactly that was definitely me yeah. uh <laughs> that's why i became a theater kid because i had no problems with bullying at all um <laughs> but yeah i um uh that's how i found out most of the secrets and stuff and uh between that and uh, I'm, I'm sure they, you guys had some form of rental uh, franchises in in the UK. I rented a lot of video games because my parents couldn't afford buying me, you know, 
brand new games all the time. And so a lot of my time that my parents would tell me is uh, before you get a new game, you have to complete it. So that's kind of where my completion instinct was born. I wasn't allowed to get new games until I was completely done with the one that I had. Um, and so Mega Man X was one of the first games that, that was rented to me that I rent that I rented. And uh, uh, I one day saw Nintendo Power that you could get the, the Hadouken. And I thought it was like an April Fool's issue because mm. they always would print those with like weird things like Tails and Smash Melee and stuff like that. Mm. And so I, when I found that out, I immediately spent weeks trying to find all the heart tanks because the heart tanks, every stage is a heart tank, but I thought that I had gotten them all, but there's two in the game that are pretty well hidden. And uh, once I figured that out, that's how I got the Hadouken. So I thought it was all a lie uh, as a young kid till I finally did it. And that's what made me tell the world, yo, you can actually get the Hadouken in, street in, uh, in Mega Man X. What do you think that is? Because I think I have that in me as well. That, I don't know what, it's, it's such a specific part of your brain that you are willing to do this. It is literally the definition of insanity, right? You do the same yeah. thing again and again and again and again and again. And I just, I have to do it. Like I have to, I have to make sure that I get absolutely everything. And I don't know why that is. It's because I'm not a particularly tidy person, but in a video game, I need all rooms completely cleared and scrubbed before I do something. And yeah. I have to feel like I've exhausted every single possibility. I don't know if it's an acting thing for me, but I I think that's why I became an actor so early on in my life because I loved the repetition of getting better at the task at hand. Yeah. So whether I was a tree in a random play or, you know, I was in a streetcar named Desire or or um who were you? Know, you? Who were you? Oh, I, I was a random I was one of the one of the friends of Stanley. No no one really big and important. Um or, you know, I was in a funny thing happened on the way to the forum um, or the producers. Like, I always found um, comfort in improvement and in getting better and and making new and bold choices. That's why I love improv comedy so much. Um, and so for, for me to, I think, like, I kind of got that love from from the repetition, the comfort of doing the same thing over and over again. That's why I loved doing plays so often mm. because each night I felt like I could do it better it, it's almost like a weird way of a speed run if you will yeah. um, and uh, I you know obviously like you want to you hope to to do better each night but you don't really know if it's going to go the way that you want it to mm. Mm. I'm, I'm I don't just know thinking, this is my theory <laughs> no I think it's a really I think it's a really good theory I think because maybe we're used to just doing the same thing again and again and again learn lines you just have to keep doing it and, and the, the idea of repetition is not is not daunting to us yeah you know, it's something that is just kind of ingrained into us especially doing plays you you, you realize that you, there is <laughs> there actually is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow believe it or not like there yeah. is there is that um i think yeah it's 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 a very very strange thing as you were saying that i was thinking you know what we should do with the next year of our lives is try and assemble like a video game amateur dramatic society <laughs> and, put on, <laughs> and put on some plays put on some like like silly video game plays if you ever need me to be in we'll get someone to write kind of like like semi semi bad theatrical versions of some of our favorite video games <laughs> and we're like, oh, i would be so game for that you're um, you're gonna laugh at me ben when i was uh in um in college i took us a, uh a, a, a um a, a playwriting class and uh i legit wrote a play about mario rpg and oh, uh oh, yeah and it was a ro it was a romance about how like bowser uh actually just loves princess peach mm -hmm. and just wants to get to know her but doesn't know how to how to like do it and so i wrote this play mm -hmm. and that was my my entire thesis for my act for my for my playwriting class was on this sh on this play and uh, it was funny. It was like well acted and well performed. But so many people were like, "What the fuck is he talking about? Like, what is, like, who cares about the Mario Brothers?" Um, but I think that's what's fun, right? Like, it's all about putting on its head. Like, that's why you see so many like voice actors do panels where you know, like, you get the cast of the Animaniacs to to read the the script for Terminator Two, right? It's just like, it's just so fun seeing people. Who are either really great at their craft or really bad uh, excel at at that kind of um, 
that putting it on its head style of, of theatrical performances. It's why it's, it's why Shakespeare is so... Everyone loves seeing Shakespeare. They love to see something familiar be reinvented in a way they didn't expect. And so yeah. it's, it comes from that same thing as to why we constantly repeat the same plays. And it's like, because you want to see a different actor interpret that role. And I imagine watching the Animaniacs do a scene from Terminator is exactly the same thing. We want to see something that we love, pastiched in a way, that reminds us of why we love that thing. But still it combines it with something else that we love. It's the most exciting thing. Um, I think I think you just described nostalgia in, in a way, right? Like, it, yeah. Like when when Final Fantasy VII remake came out, it felt like Final Fantasy VII was coming out again, and only this time we're older, we're wiser, we're fans of it. It's it's here. It didn't feel like a a rehash of a of a, of a movie franchise. It felt like something new for the first time. It did. Um, and and it's funny because we live in that day and age, right? Like either either a movie or game is on entry number seven or eight or we reboot it and we, re we reboot it and we reboot it and we hope it takes off but there's something about that that specific familiarity turning it into uh this comfort this comforting warm nostalgic feeling is is so key that and i think that's kind of what makes makes the world go round in that way yeah. um i mean you know, there's only there's that famous Enigma song, Return to Innocence, right? I think there is this this constant need for us to try and return ourselves to a place where we knew less than we do now. And to yeah. have that kind of like unfiltered, the, the obsession with it, and I said that like an, a cultural obsession with nostalgia is super, super important, is so prevalent right now. It's what are we going to reboot? How are we going to remind ourselves of the type of people we were before we know the things that we know now? And I think that's intrinsically linked with it. And I, I like you, like... Wow, when Seven Remake came out, I, <laughs> I, um, that was actually there was a two week period where Resident Evil Three Remake came out and and then Seven Remake came out in the space yep. of like two weeks, right? And I I remember getting both of them. I actually got Seven Remake a week early because everyone did, right? They sent they sent the copies out early, but I yeah. didn't want to play it, so I played Resident Evil Three Remake first, and then I played Seven, and I remember kind of crying on my sofa. In within five minutes of of that theme playing, and then Final Fantasy VII coming, and then Cloud on top of the train, and yeah, it just because it wasn't the game, it was the game because the game is absolutely brilliant. And if you haven't played it, go and play Final Fantasy VII Remake, and go and play Rebirth when it comes out. It's going to be astonishing. Um, I I think it was so much more than that. It was me remembering where I was in my life, the things that I knew, the things that I didn't know. The, yeah. the life the life that i had yet to live it's all of those things in in and video games because they are more than a film they are we have a tactile relationship with them we remember what it physically felt like to defeat something the sweat on our hands the feeling of the controller as we defeated that boss that just seemed completely impossible and that is the power of video games over anything else is is that feeling um and uh, yeah, I think nostalgia is a powerful drug and more powerful than ever in video game form. Yeah, I think uh, hearing you say that just reminded me of um, just the overall adage of, um, what was it? Oh man, let's be a thought. Um, You're busy playing Mega Man X, it's okay. You can lose a drink. <laughs> yeah, but this is my job, I'm just be good at this. Um, the so recently the mario rpg trailer for mario rpg remake just got announced the, the mm -hmm. most recent nintendo direct and um when i first saw the trailer i was like oh it's gonna be a uh you know it's finally coming to nintendo switch online and it's gonna be a it's they're not remaking it it's just and then suddenly they changed that trailer and the possibilities in my mind exploded it just suddenly i'm presented to this very familiar thing and it's that ratatouille moment it's it's that moment of yep. I haven't had a meal like this since I was a kid, and it this it was so phenomenal that it it brought back this wave of emotion that I'll never forget. And I had that with Seven. I, I've had that with with several games that have kind of been remastered and brought back. I had it with God of War, and I'm not even a God of War guy. Like I became yeah. a God of War guy because of the of the show, the, the completionist, and and just the the zeitgeist of it all. And so. It's it's that I don't know how to how to quantify it, but it's that ratatouille that 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 moment from that film where that the the evil critic remembers the first time he had that that meal from his mom or grandma, and it's it's just so fascinating because it, it's a comfort. Yeah, 
It is. You're, you are so right there. And it's, it's, it is entirely personal because that level of nostalgia is enti- it's, it's, it's what you've experienced in your life. So some people are pop for, I mean, the pop for Super Mario RPG, I remember was absolutely massive because I think I think the Nintendo Direct happened at the same time that all the reviews dropped for Final Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> right? And um, so I'm checking in being like, do people like the game? And it's like, well, they like Super Mario RPG because that's just enough. <laughs> um, but I, 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 I adore that. And it's an impossible feeling to have. But I think there are some games which I haven't played um, at originally that have been remade that I'm playing for the very first time and still I'm able to feel that sense of appreciation and nostalgia. There's just something yeah. that, like, I haven't played it yet, but in my backlog to play over the next couple of months is Dead Space. I've never played Dead Space. Woo! It's good, man. It's re- if you, Especially if you love Resident Evil, you're going to love Dead Space. I know, but I didn't want to play Dead Space immediately after having played Resident Evil 4, so I, I'm going to kind of like... I'm gonna change it up. I might play Dredge next. Is my is the thing I might play Ooh, next. Ooh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Excited for that. But like that, that, that feeling of um, you can play something that has been remade that you can feel a sense of appreciation and nostalgia for, even though you actually don't. You were never there. Um, my yeah. my beautiful, lovely fiance Naomi. Um, uh, we went to see Licorice Pizza, the uh, the Paul Thomas Anderson film, a couple of years. Yeah. Ago. And she said something so profound after watching it that it's kind of stuck with me forever. And it, and it, it kind of like, it sticks with me when it, when it comes to playing these types of games, which is it made me feel nostalgia for something that I was never there for. And interesting. It, and it's it, it struck me like that was exactly what Licorice Pizza was. Did I enjoy the film? It was fine, but it felt me made me feel like nostalgic for the 1970s that I just was not a part of, but I yeah. felt like it was. And some games can do that, you know, if they t- if they are tended to with with love and care. And um, I I have not played Super Mario RPG, but I can tell you right now, it is a day one purchase for me, and I cannot wait to cry at things that mean nothing to me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna love it. It it's 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 so good. Um, it's, it's, there's a reason why everyone online is always talking about Gino and Mallow, these characters that have never been seen in anything else outside of this franchise, um, outside of this game specifically. Um, because after Mario RPG came out, that's where we saw the splintering of the franchise where we got, um, Paper Mario as a franchise and then Mario and Luigi, uh, Superstar, uh, as a franchise. And so you kind of saw two games branch out from that one property, um, so the fact that they're doing it is like a, a crazy, crazy time. Have you played Chrono Trigger? Do, no, do you know what? This is my this is my absolute shame. I have not played Chrono Trigger now. So don't feel bad because I played it for the first time six, seven years ago, and I walked away absolutely loving it. I need Square Enix to remake Chrono Trigger because I have it on my I have I bought it on my phone when it was available yeah. on my phone and i do not want to play it on my phone i want to play it on a screen and i want to play it properly and so i really hope that they remake it because i played i mean i've been i've been talking non-stop about chain echoes recently about how i adored chain echoes and everyone has just said it is you know it's a chrono trigger kind of like yeah. and stuff and you know when people say it's the greatest game one of the greatest games of all time one of the most important games of all time i believe them I absolutely believe them. I can't wait to get stuck into that story and yeah. play it. Sorry to sidetrack you. I'm sure you were going somewhere with the have you played Chrono Trigger? No, um, no, no. This is this is exactly why I asked because I'm I'm so curious. Um I'm always interested in into here. So aside from Dead Space, what else are you playing that's like you've never experienced before, if anything? Oh god. Really good. Really good question. I'm gonna kinda like delve into my phone and have a look. What am I what am I doing? <laughs> I haven't. I just I pull up kind of my PlayStation app. Oh, tell you what I did do. Yeah, I, I know exactly. Uh, Metro Prime Remastered. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I was playing that, um, and what a game that is! That does not feel like a game that was made a long time ago. That is, what an astonishing piece of art that game is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just and I, everyone. That's why everyone's desperately like, "Hey, where's Metroid Prime 4? <laughs> I actually can't get over how good that game is, and it some games age and we go on and they're showing their age this i know i know obviously they kind of like rezzed it up a bit and i don't know what the improvements they've made but it and i know they've changed the control scheme um, yeah but wow wow we wow wowza what a video game yeah 
Um, it's very good. <laughs> it's very, very good. And I just think, you know, people saying that 2023 is one of the best years in video games. I kind of tend to agree because that game came out and that's not even part of the conversation that people are talking about. Yeah. It's, was... And it's the first, it's the first, it's that was one of the first GameCube games that's been remastered in probably quite some time because it came to the Wii, but the Wii just felt so like, oh, it's the next generation. So we didn't, you know, we, we did get the Metroid Prime collection on Wii U, but like we've been waiting for years for a new Metroid Prime. So the fact that we got remastered just is making everyone so excited because it means that we'll probably get, you know, a remaster of of Metroid Prime 2 and 3, hopefully, and then hopefully Metroid Prime 4. I feel so fortunate, actually, to have missed some of these games growing up where you just think, oh, I didn't. And I, we're in this age now where people are taking the time to revisit classics and, and, and make them more accessible for the modern day. And I yeah, and I feel so lucky that I that often I haven't played these games for the first time and I do get to experience them in their modern form. Um, yeah. The popularity with the, you know, being on brand, the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters. Um, what an what an awesome thing! I also downloaded recently Live Alive to play. Yeah, um, and I haven't started it yet, but I spent I spent this because I was spending ninety to hundred hours playing Octopath Traveler two. But yeah. you know, why not play something <laughs> in that same art style? You know, like yeah, it, I can't I can't wait to tuck into that. And um, yeah, it's 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 a it's an awesome time to be a video game player because you know there are lots of games you haven't that haven't been remade that aren't accessible to us, but you know, this is the time in history where the most games that have ever been made are available to us in one yeah. time. Whatever you want, your needs are catered to. Um, it's pretty cool, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome. really cool. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> isn't yeah. It? Aren't, aren't we cool? <laughs> um. So let, let's take a back. Let's take a step back a little bit. Let's um, do it. you've been, you okay? So. You have a filmography. You've been in, yep. in a lot of, of of British and 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 BBC type products. Yes. Um, if you if you could, obviously you're still. I'm, you can't talk about it. You are a working actor. You're probably filming on on, ho or yeah. hopefully auditioning for stuff and and doing that whole thing. What's a film franchise or or a TV show that you would just absolutely love to be a part of that you're obsessed with oh my god that is that is a really really good question and i'm just trying to think i'm trying to think of a cool answer to that what would i really <laughs> want to be a part of oh my god i would i would there's two shows that have just finished that i would have killed to have been in um obviously the ob the obvious one is succession yes because that is one of the greatest modern television shows ever made oh yeah um, but I also would have loved to have been in. Actually, there's there's three. Uh, <laughs> there is there's also Barry. The, Barry was so good. Oh my god. I haven't seen the final series yet, but I I just I just wow 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 we um, yeah wow, wow what wow <laughs> if you haven't seen <laughs> if you haven't seen Barry, I've never seen a television show like Barry ever yeah. ever. It is. It is a comedy that is at all times also a tragedy. It is yes. the perfect blend of comedy and tragedy. I've never, and also obviously as as actors, right? You you think it's the it's the funniest thing you've ever seen because it it is an actor show, very similar to The Office, where the you're seeing these choices made in real time, and you're like, I've 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 experienced this. I've seen yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, it, it is it is about a hitman who goes to LA to kill someone who that person happens to be in an acting class, and this assassin who has spent his entire life not being in touch with his emotions goes to this acting class and decides that instead of killing this person, he will become an actor. And it is <laughs> it is <laughs> it is it's as dark and weird as you'd expect because you know his past catches up with him and he still has to kill people while still wanting to be in his acting <laughs> class and it is it is it's so good um and uh yeah that, what an astonishing show but the sh the tv show that has kind of inspired me as an actor um and the show that was not just a tv show but was kind of a spiritual experience for me um is the leftovers um and that is an hbo tv show it's three series um created by damon lindelof um and it stars justin theroux 
um, about an incident that happens within the first two minutes of the show in which 2% of the world's population disappear. Uh, and then it follows uh, the events afterwards in which a society has to come to terms with what to do after 2% of the world's population have just randomly disappeared, like they've just gone to the rapture or whatever. Um, and it is this kind of meditative, spiritual thriller, um, emotional melodrama. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, Justin Theroux's performance in that is has kind of inspired me and actually inspired a lot of Clive, if I'm being honest. I took a lot of what Justin Theroux did in The Leftovers and put it into Clive. Um, uh, yeah, it's um, it's amazing. I would recommend it highly, highly to anyone. I've ever. never seen that show, but the way you described it is gonna. I'm gonna go. I I'm the kind of guy that I love to binge shows, yeah. so this is perfect for me. It's three series, ten episodes apiece. Um, each series has its own individual identity, yet still being part of a whole. And it it when you see lists of the greatest TV shows ever made, The Leftovers is usually on there. It's that it's that good. It's that good, and it's thought of that highly. And um, I know Lucy. Is it, is it still ongoing, or is it is it's it finished. over? It's done. It's done. I think Lucy and Tam absolutely love it. So you'll you'll um, just get their recommendation from it. But it's it's um, it's it's absolutely the bee's knees. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> um, it's so the first series is so dark and quite brutal, uh, to be honest. But where it kind of shifts to with series two, and then finally to series three. Um, it's a it's a it's a it's a piece of art it really really is and um all the performances carrie coon uh christopher eccleston it, it um it's it's really 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 special um and it's a show that allows itself it allows its actors to take their time and to breathe and to explore uh what it is to be human um my god that show that show is it changed my life that show changed my life um, I'll, I have to. I have to watch it right away. I'm. I'm so in. I think my description of the leftovers is a perfect, a perfect companion to you speedrunning Mega Man X. <laughs> 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 Isn't it just Jesus? Well, hey man. Uh, I this this hour and fifteen flew by so fast. Um, I, I wish I, I I I would do this again and again. Uh, I just beat the game, by the way, in case you haven't. I can tell by, that palace by the, by the sinking the palace. Yeah. <laughs> um, ben, thank you so much for this. Uh, what what an incredible opportunity! It's been so wonderful talking to you. Um, it's been it's been so so cool. I'm so happy for you, uh, you. especially because uh, your your performance in 16 is wonderful. Your passion for acting is so evident. Uh, obviously, you're a massive gamer and. Uh, you know, I the fact that you are succeeding and thriving is I I am I, I don't know you very well, but now I'm so pumped for you uh, that you're always gonna have a cheerleader in me going forward. So, congrats, man. Thank you. It it really means a lot that you even asked me to be a part of this. Like genuinely, I'm such a huge fan of yours, and it it's you've been so wonderful um, since I met you. And yeah, I I do feel that like you know, hopefully you'll talk to me after this maybe. Maybe we oh, Al, are you kidding me? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You made the mistake of becoming my friend. I'm gonna. If I see you at a show, I'm, I'm hanging out with you. That's, that's wait. your fault. <laughs> I'll buy you whatever. I will buy you whatever things you need. I will. I will <laughs> have a credit card for you. <laughs> um, with uh, with 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 now the Final Fantasy 16s out there, mm. pie in the sky. You're given. A million bazillion dollars to do whatever you want. What do you do? Um, I don't know. What in acting wise, or just to, acting, uh, gaming, both, whatever. I'd love to be. I just love to be a part of again, like an, an any sort of original franchise. The idea of building a character is is awesome, and 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 stepping into shoes and crafting something from the ground up has really been, has really been the most amazing experience and the opportunity to get to do that again and, and, and build a character that hopefully generations of people will really love would be the most amazing thing. So the, what I want is what I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, it's the, it's the, yeah. it's the, it's the thing that we, it's the thing that scares us. It's the thing that you jump into and you're like, Oh, this is utterly terrifying and it'll probably be rubbish, but you have to jump into it and, and take the risk. So, 
um, that's what that's what I would spend my millions on. I think that's, I suppose that's why you become an actor, right? Is to is to jump with both feet into the unknown, see what happens, and then hopefully something positive comes out the other end. It's so funny seeing your performance in sixteen has given me. So I haven't. So I I haven't acted in a long time. Once my YouTube career took off, I essentially stopped acting because the my hope in creating my my channel was that I would basically use it as an audition piece to go book TV and film. Mm -hmm. And this thing exploded in a way I didn't anticipate that I thought, oh, I am my own my own production company. I can make my own movies and stuff. And I and I haven't really gotten a chance to do that. But I recently did a show called God of Work, um, mm -hmm. which is like the office meets video game characters. And uh, I play Kratos. I shaved my head. Um, and I think I think you dig the show, Ben. It's the vibe is video game characters um, are actors. And in between jobs, they work at a temp agency. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I kind of play the Michael Scott character uh, <laughs> of, uh, as Kratos. Yeah. And uh, I had so much fun doing that. And, and between that and seeing your performance in Final Fantasy XVI, uh, I just got the acting bug again. I, I want to go out on auditions and, 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 and do voice acting and all that stuff. It's just, it's so palpable. You know, you see someone do it and you're like, oh, they were so good. I want to do that. That's so cool. So I, I, I'm sure speaking for lots of folks that you know you are inspiring so many people to get into voice acting and and and, and regular acting. And uh, I'm definitely inspired as hell. I want to. I'm gonna get in the best shape of my life and start auditioning for stuff. I'm ready. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I mean this. If you ever need any help or advice, not that I have much to, to offer. Oh, um, I will take it. I will take yeah. all the advice. <laughs> Honestly, it's, 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 a, it's a terrifying thing to, to jump into it. And you know this, like it's, it, there is no, there is no compass for us. We just have to kind of just trust that, that the universe will take us in a place that we're meant to be. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I love it, and I love that 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 has inspired you. And and hey, listen, if you want to do something together, let's just let's do some crazy voices or some crazy performances. I love it. Um, I'm but, I'm in. Let's let's do it. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? Why not? Let's hang out. I, I know I'm coming to the states soon, so we'll find a time to hang out. No no doubt. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Thank you for your time. I, I'm truly honored that you joined this. Uh, that you gave me some of your time, especially because I know it's late for you and you're you're relaxing and you're hopefully hopefully you've had that glass of wine by now. I've had the whole bottle. I've had the whole bottle. Um, I'm fully <laughs> naked. Uh, my dog is on my my dog is on my. He's, uh, it's been it's been quite the event. I hope that really puts this entire podcast in an entirely new perspective. Knowing that about me, but I was I was downing a lovely bottle of pickled apine as I. <laughs> <laughs> awesome Any, anything else you want to say ben before we uh we pull the plug on this no just thank you genuinely thank you um it means a lot thank you to everyone who has played the game who's reached out and supported but also to you specifically for being such a such a cheerleader i really appreciate it thank you ben guys this has been another episode of i guess how famous is gerard i hate the name of the show thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time for another video see you later mm -hmm.